Good morning. Before we start worship, I wanted to share a few words. This is what I look like during the week when we're not worshiping. But to share information with you, I'll take my mask off. There are probably a lot of questions going through our communities about what does it mean now that Allegheny County, which First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh is in, has gone to yellow. Well, it doesn't change much for us. Yellow is a time of preparing and planning and preparing and planning some more for when we will reopen. I'm sad to say, but First United Methodist Church will not be open and for worship for quite some time. And we're having new information given to us all the time. We're assessing the safety and what we need to do to keep safe and to stay safe. And so um, I would invite you to encourage you to listen to some of the public health officials and to listen to Governor's Wolf standings and, and um, see where we are with things. I know our conference website uh, has a wonderful resource that our bishop and cabinet members have put out, um, church reopening guidelines. I invite you to go to First United Methodist Church's website for the link or go right to Western Pennsylvania um, Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church and you can get these for yourselves to see. Um, there is a lot to be considered. It's not as easy as we thought, but you know what? What is now? My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the real though far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm rock I'm clinging since love is Lord of heaven and earth how can I keep from I hear that music ringing It sounds and echoes in my soul How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging love is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his, how can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing?
Good morning. I'm Pastor Tracy Cox of First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh, and welcome to worship. You are invited to join along in the chat that's going on beside us to connect with your friends and have fellowship with one another. And if it's one of your first times here, um, join on in and introduce yourself and come on into the conversation. It's good to be together. It's good to worship God together. May peace be your way. Ani Shalom means I am peace, or the peace that is within me somehow is meeting the peace that is within you. Once we experience that and we're in that space collectively, as I hope you all are right now watching, you are able to expand your mind and the questions that you may have about life and love and nature. And so, the first question that I ask of you today on the journey of this experience is, when you are longing for comfort and connection, what do you reach for? Though the presence of God is always near. It is rarely loud, often subtle, and often prefers an invitation. Permeating all of life, always and everywhere available, the holy asks us. 
to listen, to be still, to pay attention, and to practice the wisdom we receive. The holy mystery of love, the sacred calling of courage, the lure of truth and beauty, they are always moving us toward the restoration of life. Praise be to God, who is revealed in our longings, felt in connection, and encountered in the flesh of creation. Come, Spirit, come. 
Good morning, friends. Welcome to family time. Let's begin uh, with our prayer of gratitude. Lord, thank you for all that we are given, especially the love in the hearts of many. For sun, moon, stars, and sky, for family, friends, and fun. And most of all, for the opportunity to help those in need. Amen. So the other night, my daughter Adelaide got a little scared as she was going to bed. She thought that a hand was crawling out from under her bed to grab her. But then when we turned the light on, it just turned out to be this old glove. That happens a lot in the dark, when we can't see things clearly, uh, we don't know what things are, they can be a little scary. Has that ever happened to you? And so sometimes when we don't know what things are and we can't see them right, uh, it, it makes us do weird things. It controls our behavior in some ways. A lot of times we get scared of things that we don't know. Maybe it's Uh, a future that we can't quite understand, what's going to happen if we don't go back to school in the fall, or um, how are things going to change? Or maybe it's a person that you don't quite understand because they look a little bit different than you or speak a little bit differently from you or their name sounds funny to you. And so sometimes those fears of the things that we don't know and can't see well can cause us to act in strange kind of ways. So there's a story about that in the Bible where the Apostle Paul goes to some people and they are worshiping an unknown God, a statue to a God that they don't know. And and by worshiping, they're giving their life and their devotion to this God that they don't know. And what Paul says to them is that we do know that this whatever it is that you're worshiping, uh, is the one God of the universe who created the energy that, that is going forth in all the world, that created everything that we see and know and love, uh, and that can't be contained in statues like this. And so Paul's message for us today might be that in those things that we're afraid of, um, in that future that we can't see and we don't know, Uh, that God has already gone there before us and prepared a place for us. Or in those people that we don't quite understand and don't feel comfortable with and don't know what to do with, that God has already been loving them before they ever came into our lives. And so this unknown that can be so scary and so frightening sometimes gets enfolded into God's love that everything that we encounter is already part of the good and wonderful creation that God has made and has been loving all this time, just like you are. So that I I pray that God will be with you today, uh, just as God is with all of creation, right where you are. Amen. Spirit of truth, you have always been trying to get our attention. Through the cries of the prophets, the whispers of saints, the groans of the earth, you have been calling to us for ages. As we grieve all that has been lost to to destruction's hand, we renew our commitment to listening for sacred wisdom around us. With humility, we pray, come and lead us in the way of life. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture today is from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. 
The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men and they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that The divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof to this to all men by raising him from the dead." And a question to ponder. Where is the unknown God in your life? We celebrate today God's faithful presence with us always. We are reminded that our story is not done, that no matter where we are, known or unknown, no matter routine or new rhythms of life, God's presence is with us always, and always will be. Do you know where we are right now in this familiar space of First Church? Well, we are in the the Memorial Alcove. It is a quiet space, sacred space full of memories and hope. It has been enjoyable to explore the space of First United Methodist Church these last several weeks as we worship together to discover or perhaps rediscover our story in the space where we gather weekly. The known for many has been, and I promise you will someday be again, to gather for worship and fellowship on Sunday mornings. It has been empowering and comforting to come together through traditions and practices that have become known and let those traditions and practices guide us into sharing and proclaiming our story. When we gather, it is natural that when we sit in the pews to let the warm hues of amber and honey gold proclaim the strength and the warmth and the steadiness of God. When we come together on Sunday mornings, the windows are full of beauty and color and story. Our story of angels singing glory to God in the highest reign above us. Our story of Jesus beginning his earthly ministry at the wedding of Cana. Of Jesus sharing blessings to the multitudes on the mountain, of Jesus the Christ inviting us to go, to go into all the world. That is the story that embraces us every Sunday. Even the carpet that was so carefully crafted, chosen years ago, the carpet of green and black and tan, so perfectly woven together, proclaims the story of God's grace as we take one step at a time. Each step can mysteriously remind us that God steps with us. The kneelers that were lovingly crafted by church members in 1993 share our story from the scriptures. In the beginning, two by two, a star in the sky, a vine in the branches, God's eternal presence with us, we remember. The immovable altar that bears the marks of the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. The altar is the table for Holy Communion, 
The altar adorns the Easter lilies and Christmas poinsettias that proclaim that Christ is more than enough to conquer sin and death, to allow us to live lives with peace and justice. It is an altar of life, grace, love, and forgiveness. The altar rail, where for generations people have come forward to pray, to pray for an end to wars, to pray for healing for a loved one, to pray for peace in calmness in the midst of a storm, to pray for justice and what is right. Each week we gather, when we gather, we invite families up front, the steps, the steps with green carpet and black stripes. This is where families are challenged. These steps declare an openness of God's family to all generations. The steps where the choirs sing anthems of grace and goodness and beauty. When we gather, we, we see our baptismal font. And even standing still, the baptismal font proclaims the perfectness of God's grace that goes before us all. And more recently, the rainbow banners have been added to our sanctuary. They were placed there after the 2019 General Conference, and they boldly state for all that First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh is a place that strives for full inclusion of our LGBTQIA siblings. There has been much tender care, creativity, and great love by human hands to construct such a sacred place that shares our story. And we have been reminded through these shelter-in-place orders that sharing our story, sharing the faithfulness of God's presence will not and cannot be confined to a building, even one as beautiful as First United Methodist Church. We are in new territory here. We are a community that is used to coming together physically on a weekly basis. We were able to find ourselves connecting to one another very easily. And now in this new territory, we find ourselves connecting through phones, through the internet, through Zoom, and, and drive-bys, and FaceTime, and, and we even worship from our sofas, and from our kitchen tables, and from our comfy chairs. These are new times, unknown times to us. And this virtual worship is not able to embrace us in our story the same way that is known when we sit in the, the sanctuary. And that is our reality. And so it was, it was with great heart that I am drawn to the reading from Acts 17 today. Paul confronts, or perhaps a better word might be to use, points out to the Athenians that they are indeed worshiping God. There was an altar that was in the community that had a plaque with the inscription to an unknown God that the Athenians worshiped. Now, there were lots of reasons for altars and idols in the Athenian world, just as there are lots of reasons for altars and idols in our world today. But Paul humbly shares the story of this unknown, shared our story humbly and purposefully of the God who created all things. Paul shared the story of the God who put the stars in place, of a God who crafted mountains and seas. Paul shared of the God who is the Lord of the earth, God who does not live in shrines built by humans, God who does not need anything, and yet God gave God's self up for all things. This is the God of your worship. So Paul spoke and said that it's God who declares the boundaries of existence and time, and everyone listened. Were they amazed at the God who has been so near all this time? Paul continues to share this message of love. It is, it is God who places the yearning in our hearts to search 
for God. And then we come to discover and learn and relearn that God is very near to each one of us, that God has always been near to each one of us. Oh, we may know and have assurance that God is with us in the sanctuary, but remember, we're in new territory. And this new territory of shelter and place where we cannot gather together in the sanctuary, we are yearning for God's presence in the unknown sanctuaries of our homes. And Paul says, I see how extremely religious you are. Look, you're worshiping on YouTube. I see an altar to an unknown God in your home. And that altar that is unknown or maybe unseen in your home is the altar for the very same God you proclaim when you gather in the sanctuary. The story of God with us that is shared in the sanctuary is the very same God you worship at home. Our homes may not have altar rails or kneelers or pulpits or pews. Our windows in our homes may not dance in the light to share the story of God with us, but our story is the same. So we have before us this amazing opportunity to proclaim our story in a new and creative way. It is understood that we ought not to think of God as pews and stained glass and altars. And now, because of shelter in place, we are invited to share our words and actions on a new altar, an altar that has been known to you all along. So, final question for today. How will we humbly and purposefully proclaim our story of God with us from the known altar of our home? Amen. In faithfulness to the divine bonds between us, we bring what we have to one another, as we also remember our neighbors near and far. Though God has created us equally, the world does not treat us so. Until wrongs are made right, let us be generous in sharing our goods and furthering the spirit of justice. Creator of all, since our beginning you have woven our lives together at the most intimate levels. Though evil encourages us to sever our ties to one another, you reveal our shared humanity and call us to defense of our neighbors. As we bring our offerings, give us wisdom for these days that we might live what we believe by seeking an end to all forces of inequity and injustice. Amen. Receive this benediction. In knowledge of love's abiding presence, let us move into the rest of this day with a well of tenderness for ourselves, with generous patience towards all who are struggling and with renewed loyalty to only the things which further life for all our neighbors, our kin, our family, and shared humanity. For God is close to each of us, and so our hope is always near. Go in peace.
Okay. 